What is up you guys, Nick here from Shop Last and today I'm going to show you how to play and build the Scandinavian yard game they call Koob. So the first portion of this video is going to be how to build it. It's very easy to build. Uh, the second portion is going to be how to play and kind of all the rules involved, etc. Um, also heads up, the building portion I recorded kind of mocking and mimicking the voice from the guy who does the how it's made videos because I thought it would be funny. Um, so, and I kind of already edited it and it was like a lot of work and it's probably kind of annoying, but I'm not going to fix it. So, sorry. The game coop consists of 21 total pieces, four field markers, six batons, 10 coops, and one king. The materials needed to build a coop set are one eight foot four by four, one six foot two by two, two four foot one and a quarter inch dowels, two pieces of string, one 16 and a half foot piece, and one 26 foot piece. The measurements for your pieces are as following. The king should be 4 inches by 12 inches in height. Batons must be 12 inches tall and 1 and a quarter inch dowel. Field markers should be 12 inches tall and 1 and a half inches wide. The cubes must be 6 inches tall and 2 and 3 quarters inches wide. The construction of the pieces for cube is quite simple. First, take your 4x4 four and cut off one foot long piece. This is your king. Now, using the remainder 4x4, four four, rip two of the surfaces down so that each face is two and three quarters inch wide. Then, cut out 10 six inch pieces. These are your coops. Now, cut out six one foot long pieces from your dowel. These are your batons. And lastly, take your 2x2 two two and cut out four one foot long pieces. These are your field markers. You can either cut angles into the end of the field markers, creating a stake, or you can insert screws on the ends, acting as the grounding posts. Keeping with tradition, you want to cut a crown-like shape into the top of your king piece. This is done by cutting angles onto the top, creating peaks to mimic a crown. I finish the pieces by rounding over all the sharp edges with a router and sanding all of the faces smooth. Traditionally, you would paint the pieces in fun colors, but this is optional. <coughs> Rules of Cube. Objective. The objective of the game is to win by being the first team to knock down your opponent's cubes, followed by the king. If the king is knocked over at any time before all baseline and field cubes on the opponent's side have been knocked down, you lose the game. Similar to the eight ball in pool. Setting up the game. The game is set up by first outlining the field boundaries using the field markers. Use the two strings to measure the correct distance of the field boundaries and insert one field marker at each corner of the field. The field should be roughly 16 feet by 26 feet. Once you have the field markers in place, you can then set up your baseline cubes. There should be five baseline cubes evenly spaced at each end of the field, placing them on the side of the field that is the shortest, the 16 foot long side, in between the field markers. Once you have your baseline cubes in place, you can then place the king in the center of the field. The best method to place the king is to start at one corner of the field and walk towards the opposing corner until you are in between the other opposing field markers. The king marks an imaginary line that splits the field in half. Who begins? The side that starts is determined by one of the players from each side throwing a baton as close to the king as possible without hitting it. Whomever is closest without hitting the king gets to throw first. Rules of throwing. You must only throw the baton underhand and end over end, holding from one side of the baton. You cannot throw a baton overhand or helicopter it. How to play. There can be anywhere from one to six players per team. Each team gets six batons to throw each turn. 
We will separate the teams by calling them Team A and Team B to clarify from here on out. Let's say that Team A threw their baton closest to the king, and they get to throw first. Team A will then throw all six of their batons and try to knock down as many of Team B's baseline cubes as possible. Once Team A has thrown all of their batons, it is now Team B's turn to throw. If Team A wasn't able to knock down any baseline cubes, then Team B may begin to try and knock down Team A's baseline cubes. However, if Team A was able to knock down some of Team B's baseline cubes, Team B must first take their fallen cubes and throw them onto Team A's side of the field. These are now field cubes. Cubes can only be thrown from behind the baseline. Once Team B has thrown their field cubes onto Team A's side of the field, Team A then has to stand the field cubes up where they are rested, on either end of the field cube, with one of the faces pointing towards Team B. Field cubes cannot be stood up at an angle other than parallel to the field. Rules for throwing and stacking field cubes. If Team B throws one of their field cubes outside of the boundary of the field, they are entitled to one rethrow. A cube is out of bounds if more than half of the cube is outside of the boundary. If more than half of the cube is in bounds, it has to be stood up on the side that is still in bounds. If Team B knocks down one of Team A's baseline cubes with one of their thrown field cubes, the baseline cube is stood back up where it was. If Team B's field cube is still within bounds after knocking down a baseline cube, it is stood up in place. If it is out of bounds, you will still stand up the baseline cube and Team B gets a rethrow if they haven't already used one. If Team B throws two cubes out of bounds and uses one rethrow, Team A gets to choose where on the field to place the out of bounds cube. A hand placed cube cannot be placed closer than one cube's horizontal length, six inches, to another cube, including the king. Any cubes thrown out of bounds after one rethrow is used can be placed anywhere on that side of the field. The team throwing the cubes are granted one rethrow every turn you cannot accumulate rethrows. If you want to be a saucy wench, you can place an out-of-bounds cube directly behind the king, as long as it's at least a cube's horizontal length from the king, maximizing the possibility of your opponent accidentally knocking over the king during their turn to throw. If Team B throws a cube in bounds on Team A's side of the field and manages to directly hit it with another thrown cube, before that cube touches the ground, Team A must stack the cubes together on top of the originally thrown cube. Example, Team B throws cube one onto Team A's side of the field and then manages to directly hit it with cube two. You would stack cube two on top of cube one. If then Team B throws cube three and misses cube one but hits cube two, cube three is not stackable. But if Team B throws cube four and it hits cube three, cube three and four are stackable with cube three being the base of the stack. The bottom cube must always be placed vertically, although you may stack the following cubes in any manner you please, as long as the standing faces are parallel to either team's side of the field. The top or bottom of the stacked cubes cannot be facing either team's end of the field. Continuing how to play. Now that team B has thrown all of their field cubes and team A has stood them up accordingly, Team B now gets to throw their six batons. Team B must first knock down all field cubes before any baseline cubes can be knocked down. If a baseline cube is knocked down while there are still standing field cubes, the baseline cube is put back into place. Only once Team B knocks down all of their field cubes are they allowed to knock down Team A's baseline cubes. Let's say that Team B was able to knock down all of their field cubes but one. Team A must now throw the fallen field cubes from behind their baseline onto Team B's side of the field. Once Team B has stood up the thrown cubes accordingly, Team A can now throw their batons. The field cube that Team B failed to knock down now marks the new throwing line for Team A until Team B is able to knock down on their following turns. This makes it easier for Team A to knock down Team B's cubes. Let's say that Team A was able to knock down all of Team B's field cubes and two more of their baseline cubes. Team B must now throw all fallen cubes onto Team A's side of the field. Team A will then stand the thrown cubes up accordingly. 
and it is again Team B's turn to try and knock down all field cubes and then as many baseline cubes as possible. This cycle repeats itself until one of the teams is able to knock down all standing cubes on their opponent's side of the field and then knock down the king. 